Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. For this video, I'm joining you a little later in the day because this video is gonna deal with some touch-up tips as well as just talking about a lot of different products that I reach for all the time um, but don't necessarily get a lot of mentions in my videos. So it's gonna be kind of random. Not everything is necessarily a makeup product but some tools as well. So the first one I wanna talk about is this Shadow Switch from Sigma. I've been using this for a few weeks now and I think it's incredibly handy when you're going between different shades and you're still wanting to use the same brush and it's this silicone matte sort of thing. I just have it sitting flat on my desk and it's got these nubbies of different configurations all over it. It reminds me a lot of their different brush cleaning tools and like up here it says eyeshadow, blending, liquid, powder, contour, bronzer, and it's the same thing on the back side as well. It really doesn't matter what you do where, but if you just wipe your brush across it, you'll find that it immediately picks up the powder that you were just using on there and now you're fresh and good to go for a new shade and you don't have that interference, you know? So I think that's handy. Again, I just have it sitting flat here on my table and if I'm doing an eyeshadow look and I need to remove a shade real quick, that's very, very handy. Another thing I'm reaching for all the time is my little hand mirror and I'm not sure that this one is gonna be available all the time. This is the ColourPop Barbie one. It's a super nice size when your eyeshadow palette maybe doesn't come with a mirror and you need to do mascara or eyeliner or just get in close to see your shadow a little bit better. It's so nice to have something to hold up close that's not super big. It seems like ColourPop has put out a few of these with some of their different collections, so maybe you can jump on it from time to time when you see it available, but like this size of mirror is so, so nice to have. Also, I've mentioned these before when I talk about tools and just an overall must-have, but I do use them every single day without fail, and they're so cheap. Just a couple of bucks, Elf's tweezers. They are such good quality. They come right together at the end, a little slant tip tweezer, and that's gonna get in there and, you know, take care of your unibrow or whatever you're dealing with on your face. And um, I use them every morning, like right after I do my skincare. Rarely gets a mention in a video, but completely deserves it, and is just one of the best tweezers out there, in my opinion. This is really random, but this is my little phone prop and if I'm doing my makeup and I'm kind of going off of a list that I've made for myself, uh, if I've made some bullet points or if I'm just doing my makeup and not shooting a video but listening to a YouTube video or some music or whatever, this is the easiest thing. It just props my phone up just like that on my table. You can go lengthwise also with it but I just think that's really really handy um, for anybody just using a table setup who wants their phone kind of where they can refer to it easily at times. I'm pretty sure I paid a dollar for this one at Walmart, but I can maybe look it up online too. Here's another thing that comes under the category of often seen in videos, rarely mentioned, but it's my Shiseido Eyelash Curler. I got this around the holidays or a little before the holidays last year, and I really do love it. I think it's the best lash curler. Love the squish of it, love the shape of this curve, and I just feel like it accommodates my lash line really well. Um, a neat thing about this is that I noticed Ulta is now selling this and you can get it in this pretty gold tone. It's not just for Christmas time anymore. So I love this one. If you've struggled finding a lash curler that really works for you, you might give this a shot and just see if you like it. They also have a silver tone. It seems to be the exact same shape and size. Um, I just like the gold. Also, you guys, a lot of times when I start my makeup look, I put something on my lips to get them kind of softened up and a little bit pre-treated, you know, um, because I usually do my lips at the end of my makeup routine. So I've got a span of time there where the lips can be like slow cooking in some sauce, you know? So I love these hangover pillow balms from Too Faced and I have the Coco Kiss. I also have the banana one and I love how refreshing these actually feel. There is a cooling sensation that goes with these, but each one has a really nice scent. Banana candy or old school like chocolatey flavored candy. I really love Oh, love that smell. Really moisturizing, kind of a thick hydration level with it. I've got just the classic one, the first one that they came out with downstairs in my bathroom. And it's a nice before bed product too, but I haven't been able to let go of either of these up here for just pre-makeup routine. It's the skincare step for your lips. So I've really enjoyed those so, so much. Next, I wanna talk about touching up a little bit because I have a look here that I could stand to touch up. And I feel like I'm becoming more aware of 
how my makeup's wearing throughout the day with all the picking up and dropping off of kids. Um, I'm getting out more of these days with kids starting school, like there's a time I have to go drop off and pick up Biddy and then picking up Belle later on. And it makes me kind of like stop and think about what the makeup's doing before I leave the house. And I'm putting a little more time into a touch-up. Now granted, I many days do carry the expectation of my makeup taking me from the start of the day to the end of the day without having to do anything. But sometimes it's nice to reassess and maybe give a little bit of a touch-up. And I feel like it's a time to get use out of other products that maybe you're not using at the very start of your makeup routine. So let me explain. One such product is the Hourglass um, Ethereal Light Ambient Lighting Powder. So I like to kind of touch up with this on my T-zone and possibly under the eyes a little bit. What I might first do is actually take a Q-tip. I got these cute leopard print Q-tips from Walmart. I love them. Um, but a first step to my touching up is to look at my under eye and just see if anything has gotten smudgy. Uh, today, I don't think I even did lower lash mascara or shadow, so everything's pretty much intact. But you just kind of go over that area, see if any excess has collected in creases or anything like that. Do that first. And then I just go in with this pretty powder that kind of like refreshes and brightens up that area. Do you see the low-key like brightening that's happening with this? And I'll go around my nose again with it. I'll maybe hit right up in here. Do, do, do. And I just feel a little brightened up and the finish of this is so natural on the skin. Like there's just maybe the teeniest bit of sheen happening in there, but it, it's really working for me. I love that and I had forgotten how much I really enjoyed it until I started touching up with it. Here's a way to touch up your makeup that you might never really think of, but actually touching up the brows. Sometimes they can droop a little, sometimes they can get a little messed up. And let's say I'm most of the time doing something to fill them in and then maybe using a tinted gel. What about the clear gels that I have? They're getting very little use. Like I have this clear one from Believe Beauty. It could be any clear gel, but kind of like spruce your brow up a little bit. This is such an underrated, unmentioned way to like touch up and refresh your look. See, I'm just pulling them upward a bit and suddenly my face is getting a little more of a lift, you know? Just refluff things to think about. I don't know, but I feel like that's doing something. And if I were to go in on top of the brows with like more tinted gel, that stuff can usually be maybe a little heavier. And this is just nice and light. It's like an extra spritz of hairspray for the hair. That's that in the brows. Now, if I'm thinking of touching up my lips, there's one or two things I might do. I do keep my e.l.f. Black Cherry Smooth Slick, I think it's called. It's like a tinted lip balm. I keep that downstairs in the bathroom and that's just a real easy swipe it on type of thing. But another way that you can get the most finished look with one product is to take a lip liner that can be easily applied, a really creamy lip liner. I've got a couple here like from Wet n Wild. This is a nice chance to use those. I really like Revlon's too. But let's say I'm using this Bare to Comment shade today. I already have some of that existing on my lips, so let's just go over it. And you'll find when you touch up with lip liner, you get a really more precise look. And then if I'm getting into kind of a crowded area in the pickup zone, I can pop my mask on and this isn't really like a huge transfer concern. Now, if you got a lip liner that pulls and tugs a lot, it, it's not going to be pleasant to touch up with that real quick, but this has a smooth glide. So I'm getting used out of my wet and wild ones like this. And with all that control, it's looking nice and finished. Now here's my last way I feel like I can get use out of something for a touch-up that I may not reach for all the time in my everyday look. I feel like I'm by default always wanting to grab a powder blush. I don't know what it is, that's what I'm drawn to. But I have a lot of cream blushes on hand, so I just pulled out one I hadn't used in a while. This is Milani and it's called Nude Kiss. And when I'm in touch-up mode and maybe I don't want to add a lot more powder, like I've already done the little hourglass powder. I just add in a little bit of cream blush and I'm not getting way, way powdery on top of existing makeup that I've already put on, but I'm restoring suddenly the health and light and loveliness on the face, you know? This is really pretty. So not something everybody has to do. And like I said, I do expect a lot out of my makeup. 
going through the day. I like it to last really well, but this is kind of like an opportunity to come up here if I have the chance and play with makeup a little more and try some different things. But yeah, guys, that's all I've got. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear in the comments section what products you feel like you reach for a lot but don't necessarily give a lot of thought or credit to. We all have like maybe an all-star foundation or concealer that we're always grabbing and talking about or a certain eyeshadow palette that gets a lot of love. What about your favorite tweezers or whatever you do to prop your phone up? Like that stuff needs love too. So thank you for your time, everybody. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you very soon. I love you. Bye.